Hey Tubers! Welcome back for another adventure. And let's talk about trying to stay warm this winter. I happened to find a solution that costs a little bit under a hundred dollars that will really do you well for staying warm. Let's talk about my garage quickly and then we'll talk about how we heat it. This garage is 24 by 24. It has four garage doors. I don't know, 8 by 8, 7 by 8, whatever the heck they are. Right, the doors are insulated. I did go with the better ones and they seal pretty well. The ceiling, I went with that Mylar membrane. You see how it reflects just quickly about that. The problem with it is when the wind blows, particularly during the summer, when you have only one door open, it has a tendency to balloon, right, and get torn up. It works, but not great. You guys could say I put some plywood up to help mitigate that and to help insulate it a little better. So just from a size point of view, so you could do some calculations in your head. I started out heating this place. You guys could see that propane mushroom heater right there. Does a pretty good job. It's about 15,000 BTUs. If you're anywhere near it, you're nice and warm. The metal thing reflecting it down. Helpful. Does a pretty good job. The thing is, I was always worried about having something too close to it and it catching fire. I really wanted a more hot air type solution rather than a radiant type solution like that is. I installed one of these caravan heaters. These things are good for 27,000 BTUs. Um, running them on high. This is an 8 kilowatt model, which is 27.3 um, BTUs, 27,300. Uh, they come in uh, three versions. You could get the square version like this, which is the one I have installed. You could get a taller version, or you could buy them in their component pieces. You get the little heat guy and the muffler and uh, this is an air intake. That's the muffler. One's an intake muffler. One's an exhaust muffler. You can see the clamps. Comes with the hose so you can direct the air. And it comes with that exhaust that, by the way, gets crazy hot. The air intake, the exhaust, all that stuff is done through the bottom. You could see that right there. And quite honestly, you really want to make sure that you have that's a fuel line right fuel pump pumps fuel into that line which goes into the combustion chamber you want to make sure all these things are away from hot components so that's part of the install obviously I installed the earlier version um, between the garage doors you guys could see I did this little bump out to do that and you could see down there where the exhaust pipe comes out and I put an extra piece of copper around it so there's air space around the copper and then air space around the copper and the hot pipe <laughs> and then uh, air space around the copper and the uh, wood to keep from burning the place down. You could see where I put it in here. You could see metal, metal on the back, metal on the side, metal on the top. This is one of those earlier ver versions when your control was this push button or remote control. And the nice thing is with this air downspout, blows right on your feet. And I have a battery up here, a solar charge controller. So you can see the sun charges my battery up. My battery powers my 12 volt heater and it blows nice hot air on the floor to keep my feet warm. Um, if you manage to keep your feet warm between the use perhaps of a little um, mat made out of uh, some polymer or if you, uh, you put a carpet, an old juice carpet on the floor, you manage to keep your feet warm, you'll last a lot longer. 
I also made an extra set of doors that go over the sunny side of the garage, the doors that are on the sunny side. This is a boating mylar tarp. You can see the edge of it there, right? I just built a wooden frame, stapled it down, put the hinges on. You can see I used a plastic trim around it. These open up so you can get in and out, right? The pair of them seal pretty well. And I put a set over there too. They actually work pretty good. Um, with the solar radiation but more than that it lets the light in i could uh i could put a quick two and a half inch phillips head to make sure that this is drawn tight and seals you know to fight the wood warpage anyway between the vinyl doors letting the light in and firing up 27,000 BTUs worth of heat and keeping it in an area that I'm kind of working I'm able to stay warm enough to get by if I fire this thing up and also when there's space around here when this place isn't stuffed so tight um, I also managed to fire that guy up even if I only run that one for about a half hour the radiant heat from that seems to take the chill off of all the surfaces, right? So that everything you touch isn't crazy cold. And that then maintains the temperature in here. Now, if it's 20 below zero outside with a wind blowing, <laughs> those guys with the way this garage is not insulated, right? And... The uh, wind will allow air infiltration, you know. If you're used to that kind of weather, it's better than nothing. But uh, it's not going to be 70 degrees. Let me work in my t-shirt in here, right? Once again, it'll be helpful, but not great. Typically, my weather, I live in the Hudson Valley of New York. So... The coldest it ever gets during the day around here, typically in the 30s, yes, we get days where we could get below zero, but that's not typical. Typically, if you consider 30 Fahrenheit, zero Celsius around your cold day, typically a cold night is somewhere around 20 degrees Um uh, Fahrenheit, which is, I don't know, Celsius minus 8, um, minus 9, something like that. Um, that's that's really the extent of, of, of the harsh weather. And for 30 degrees or above, even running just that takes a lot of the chill off the air. You could get up to 55 or so in here. And if you're working and moving, that's more than enough heat to keep yourself comfortable. Now I mentioned that these things come in different configurations, short and squat, the taller version, or you could buy just the heater guts itself and it comes with all the spare parts, including these guys, right? Um, and then you could put your own cabinet around it. The cabinet adds about 10 bucks. And when you get it in this configuration, you also get a loose fruit fuel tank and a loose poly hose, um, that you can hook everything up with for the extra 10 bucks. I really think it pays to get them to configure it for you. The old one, like I showed you, only had the single push button. The newer versions have the controls plus the key fob for control. And some of even the newer, newer versions have it that the key fob has a display that talks to it. Obviously, the more complicated things get, the greater the possibility of a problem. But if you keep your 12 volt battery type supply clean, like a battery would provide you, um, you shouldn't have too much trouble. About heating one's home with this, I would be nervous about running these without some kind of guidance. The, once again, you put the fuel in 
through a poly hose right there. I believe this is cold and this one is hot, but it's relatively close. And by hot, I mean this is crazy hot, like, you, you know, leave smoking fingerprints behind if you touch it kind of hot. So um, do beware that I probably wouldn't run it without keeping somewhat of an eye on it. If you notice, one of my safety concerns is to put it in a tray. Obviously, by having a tray here, if this thing is leaking, I'll see a puddle of diesel and not fire it up, right? I'll be smart enough not to fire it up. So that's one of the safety things I did. Notice the fire extinguisher right next to it, just in case the thing torches itself up. I normally only put the fuel in it that I'm going to use. And this thing uses a little less than a quart an hour. Just to give you an idea of fuel consumption. So if you know you're going to be out here for three hours, throw three quarts in it. Fire it up. Why have all the extra fuel? One other consideration, and you kind of find out this stuff the hard way. If you're using one of these or any other source of heat and you have gasoline in the garage, which I seem to all over the place, um, gasoline in this container, see how the sides are all pulled in? Because that's when it got cold, it pulled the sides in. When I heat that up, it's going to expand. For some of these, <laughs> the fuel has, once again, compressed like this in the cold. Once I heat up the garage, the fuel tanks in all these vehicles will pressurize. And some of them will pressurize to the point, you know, many are ventilated, but some of them you close off to keep the gas fresh. Some of them will pressurize to the point where they will overpower your needle valve and they'll start dripping gasoline on the floor. Air intake for this is a full two feet off the floor. So if there's some fumes on the floor, it will not light up. These things are also set up that you could do an air take from outside. So if you're taking air from outside and exhausting uh, to outside, there's less of a possibility of you uh, launching yourself to the moon with gasoline vapors. All these things are things you need to consideration because a garage isn't worth very much once it burns down and takes all your toys with it. I don't want this video to get too long, so let me finish up here. These heaters, less than a hundred bucks, about 90 bucks configured like this, about 80 bucks configured um, in a do it yourself, put it together model. Um, your choice. Once again, tall or short and squat. I want with short and squat. First time you fire this thing up, do yourself a favor. Go through the trouble of taking it out and looking to make sure that your mice buddies didn't build a nice little house in it. As I step over here, it smells a little mousy pee to me. So I really need to do that before I fire that up for the first time this winter. Remember safety, right? Uh, fumes getting to it and igniting. Um, the exhaust is crazy hot. So if it touches something, gradually it'll set it ablaze. Actually beyond gradually, it'll settle to blaze pretty quickly. And do remember that exhaust is hot enough, not hot enough that you will leave smoldering fingerprints behind. Don't do that. It hurts. Um, my garage isn't greatly insulated and it makes a difference, you know. It could be the difference between could I work out in the garage today or is it too bloody cold and I, you know, got to stay in the house and huddle by the fire. I want to thank you all for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe. I hope you find um, some of these non-repair videos helpful. If you could get out and work in the garage, you could make your own repair video, eh? So this really does make a difference. Even for somebody's um, 
basement perhaps if you could set up the heater safely um, many basements typically hang out about 45 50 degrees if you don't have a heating source down there but you have the earth that provides you with heat so um, and then adding this to it that's enough to make a difference it's relatively warm today that thing is still alive I don't know what is it out here it says 50 no I don't know what is that 45 degrees that's what I figured it would be so it's about the same as the outside temperature remember folks I need you all to keep your feet down I need you to keep your heads up and I want you all to get out there and enjoy each and every day remember what I've told you you don't know how many you're gonna get so make sure you you get out there and have fun yeah I'm uh, fighting my way back with my health uh, it seems to be a longer battle than I had anticipated and it seems that um, I get tired very very easy um, I don't I don't like getting an eight-hour day of work I'm lucky if I get get three hours uh, worth of working on stuff I'm just I'm just tired I'm just beat so hopefully that gets better as time passes once again feet down heads up get out and have some fun bye now